Start Dex Roboress were released back in May of 2021 and were followed by set 1 merely a week later. Since then, we have received quite a few more sets. And with the Overdress anime having aired its final episode and the Divine Z era looming over the horizon, we thought it would be appropriate to look back at all the units we have received. Doing every nation in one video would make for quite a lengthy video, so we're going to break it up into the 6 main nations and then do all the extras in one last video. In today's entry, we are going to discuss the nation of Nikita Sanctuary. Let's get right into it with Bastion from the first start decks. Bastion is a vanguard that cares about grade 3 units. Surprisingly, he has received countless waves of support over the course of Overdress. The original Bastion could re-stand a rearguard if you revealed a grade 3 card during drive check. He also provided grade 3 units with a uh, plus 2k power increase. You can see what he was all about by looking at his first form. You played a grade 3 heavy deck which made you incredibly susceptible to early game rushing. This however was worth it as the aggro you could put out right away was incredible in the early era of Overdress. With cards like Alden providing card draw and Fasado putting on hit pressure, the deck could quite quickly turn the tide of the game if it got to grade 3 without dying. Then, similarly to Nirvana, Bruce and Seraph, he got a grade 4. Introducing Bastion Prime, a grade 4 that kept many of the original Bastion's effects. The plus 2k power increase remained, but now only applied to the front row. He could also now resend all of your grade 3 regards if you revealed a grade 3 or greater card during your drive checks. He received cards like Pride to Protect to give all your units boost, as well as Embrace Dragon that provided the deck with a huge shield value grade 3. Bastion Prime, similar to, to Pure Light, received a promo that allowed it to write up from hand if your opponent was at grade 3. However, unlike Pure Light, Bastion has received a third form. Bastion Accord, the latest form in the Bastion Saga. He would count as the original Bastion while on Vanguard Circle and now provided plus 5k to your front row re uh, grade 3 or greater rearguards and provided them with a resist-like effect. This would persist during either player's turn, unlike the previous Bastions, and now his restand ability was no longer tied to revealing grade 3 during drive checks. Instead, he would perform the restand regardless, but now you could give your rearguard drive checks. You would need to counterblast one and discard a card with Bastion in his card name, but it was well worth the cost. Bastion Accord also received a much needed promo that the overseas community had for quite a while. Sapien Towel, a grade 1 that could increase its grade by 2 while gaining plus 2k if your vanguard was Bastion. He also created Soul, gave your vanguard power, and provided the deck with countercharging. Bastion has been competing at the regional level quite well, but has yet to be properly tested against the new decks in set 13. We will see how the world's finals end up, but now let's discuss a unit that is reminiscent of Oracle Think Tank. That being Hexorb Sorceress, a grade 3 unit that provided your rearguards with, with power when you revealed a trigger during drive checks. She was, able to stack, she was also able to stack triggers if you Persona rolled that turn, as well as gaining a drive. She was a bit too slow to really do much, seeing as how her ability was forcefully locked behind your turn 4. However, unlike many of the units that debuted in set 1, she has a second form. Aquamarine, Hex Orb's newest form, she counted herself as the original while on Vanguard Circle. This meant that any of her old support would work with her as well. Aquamarine had effects similar to the original. If you Persona Road, she gained a drive, and your triggers gave uh, plus 20k instead of plus 10k. And when you reel the trigger, you could Soul Blast 1 to restand a rearguard. So the deck now had access to 5 attacks, something the original could do but had to play quite a few wonky cards to achieve. Aquamarine is what I believe Bushiroad should do when retraining old units, allowing you to use the old support as well as fixing issues from the previous form. Now, let's discuss the glitter deck with the most personality, the Greya. A bipolar knight that relies on switching forms to gain effects. Light the Greya allows you to call a rearguard from deck and restart a rearguard if you rode her over Dark the Greya. And then Dark the Greya would retire two of your rearguards to retire one of your opponent's rearguards, and could restand herself if you rode over Light the Greya. These are abilities are similar to Royal and Shadow Paladins, and these first abilities would also receive a buff if you had the other form in Soul. Light the Greya could call two instead of one if you had Dark the Greya in Soul, and then Dark could retire an entire column if you had Light in Soul. You might be wondering if you had to trade Persona Ride for these effects, but no, they both had a continuous ability that said a Persona Ride would work as long as it was a card with the Greya that was rode on top of them. She has received quite a large amount of support as well as a new form. Epe de Justice the Greya allowed you to activate double Persona Ride. This combined with the Greya's promo order allowed you to give her front row plus 30k and draw 4 cards. The deck is quite good at filtering and card draw, so it can put out some intense pressure. But moving on from her, we now have another unit that can't decide on a color scheme, Youthberg. He has the unique ability to Rebel Dress. This allows you to write a card with Rebel form from hand to perform a fourth attack when Youthberg finishes attacking. Before we discuss the many Rebel forms, let's talk about the two Rebel Dress units. Youthberg first debuted in a Atrault deck and then received a proper form in set 6. Both cards have the exact same Rebel Dress ability while the deck form has a rearguard skill and the main set has an activated ability. Now, let's quickly discuss the Rebel forms. In the Atrault deck, we received Cess to gain plus 15 when Rebel Dress and a crit if you Persona wrote that turn. Then in set 6, we got Gust, who for a discard would gain a drive and plus 10k. 
The drives he gained was because when you Revel Dress, the unit you ride loses all drives. Following that, we received uh, Tempest, who provided the deck with power, card draw, and removal. This Revel form was the strongest until we received his latest form, Full Blast, which gained abilities based on which Revel forms you had in Soul. Cess gave him a crit, Gus gave him a drive, and Tempest gave him removal. If you had all three, your front row gained plus 15k, which along alongside Persona Ride was an insane plus 25k to the front row. All the Revel forms return to the base Youth Burke at the end of turn, so you don't have to worry about being stuck in any of them uh, for a turn. Youth Burke is one of my personal contenders for likely to win Worlds, but there is quite a, a bit of competition this year. But now let's talk about the encounter decks. Keter is the nation with the most encounter decks with a total of five different units that can be your boss unit. We'll start from the very beginning with Phantom Blaster Dragon and Phantom Blaster Overlord. Uh, for the rest of this, I will be just referring them, referring to them as PBD and PBO to save us both time. Uh, PBD gains 10k in a crit by returning three rear guards, which is quite a, key, a steep cause, so let's just move along to PBO, as he is the main boss nowadays. PBO gains a crit by having PBO in soul, which was made easy with the addition of Nemain, who allowed you to just put a card from hand into soul for a CB and would then draw you two cards. Very good card. So, facilitated the uh, double crit on PBO. PBO also gave the deck a fourth attack, and with the addition of the promo Cleodona, you could perform drive checks on rearguard. Uh, this is a very strong aggro deck, but it does fall behind against many of the current meta threats, as if you have a PG on your first grade 3 ride, you can almost immediately nullify any pressure and just do your strategy. Then we have the Royal Paladins and MLB, a unit that becomes 15k during both turns if you have Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark and Soul, and then if he absorbs either of them during combat, he gains a different effect. For absorbing Blaster Blade, he can retire an opponent's rearguard, and for absorbing Blaster Dark, he can gain a drive. The deck has also received two promos that bumped up its credit strategy quite a bit, the first one being Emmeline who can help you find blasters and gains power when your blaster unit attacks, which means she can gain upwards of 15 to 20k power uh, during your turn. And then the second is Cordelia who has two effects if she is in the back row rearguard, a center column, and your vanguard is MLB. The first effect allows you to counterblast one to call blaster blade and a blaster dark to rearguard in the same column, which gives the deck access to a fourth attack. And then the second effect gives all of your grade 2 rearguards boost as long as your opponent is at grade 3 or greater. The deck is not incredibly strong, but is by no means a pushover. We could receive some support in Divine Z that could bump it up. But with that, let's move on to uh, another one of the stronger encounter decks, Minerva. A deck that I personally have seen very little of, but it is a beast of a deck. Just at face value, the deck has power, stacking capabilities, multi-attack, and that means the deck has pretty much everything it needs to win. With cards like Cameo giving you extra rearguard swings and the promo Thast is facilitating this, as well as providing soul and deck thinning, the deck has pretty much everything it needs to really become a top contender. I don't know if the deck can still compete, as Set 13 has introduced quite a few contenders, but Minerva can is still a very strong deck. Then, moving on from Minerva, we have Ezel. The Gold Paladins kept their ability to rush with Ezel being able to skip up from Grade 2 to Grade 3, uh, as early as your opponent's grade 1 or grade 2 turn. This means your opponent has to deal with a grade 3 maybe 1 or 2 turns earlier than they expected, and if they are to survive the rush and get to grade 3, then Ezel now allows you to perform 5 attacks. Ezel also received a promo recently that gave the deck more power and the ability to return rearguards to hand, meaning you are able to keep some extra cards in hand or just give some extra power. Ezel is a high roll deck, so don't expect to win games consistently, but you can beat even some of the strongest decks out there by just rushing them out, out the gate. And then the final encounter deck is my personal favorite unit across all of Vanguard's history, Luard. Uh, the new Luard support is quite cool, and I don't know if it will shine in D format. I personally enjoy playing Luard a lot more in premium, so I don't really uh, see myself playing Luard in Overdress. But the new strides have both multi-attack and guard restrictions, but since it hasn't officially released in English, it's kind of hard for me to judge how strong it'll be in our metagame, as we don't have certain decks in uh, our format that Japan does, things like um, the Quintuplets uh, deck and the uh, Pinball game one, I don't remember what it's called right now, uh, but we don't have either one of those decks, and I believe both of them have uh, become quite good over the, the past couple uh, years. Uh, but with that, we conclude the encounter portion of this list, and let's finish off the remaining five units, starting with Sol Rayron, who can stack the deck, but weirdly enough wants to stack normal units, so he can get a total of 5 attacks and give your front row plus 5k. His latest support was good, but the deck is hard to build and there's re no real card advantage as most effects allow you to just kind of trade a card for a card. So you'll never actually gain card advantage, you're more of digging through the deck. Um, I hope he does get more support as we move into Divine Z, but it's hard to really think what they can do to properly help him outside of giving him maybe a new form, but 
even then I feel like that would be a, a bit too soon to, to give him a new form. Uh, but moving on from poor Solreiron, we have a familiar face with Alden. From being a support unit for Bastion to being the captain of his own deck, this new Alden has the ability to draw two, similar to the old one, as long as you car call a card. However, unlike the old Alden, you don't have to call a grade 3, you can call any card. Uh, his strategy relies on playing different grade units to uh, facilitate a fourth attack, in which you bounce a unit and then call two units whose grades equal to the grade of the unit you bounced. Uh, he ha also has received a promo grade 0 that allows you to gain a fifth attack a bit more consistently, although the promo isn't released in English yet, so... Uh, we do have to wait for that to come out. Uh, we also even have some confirmed support in Divine Sea, so clearly they haven't forgotten about him. Although he is relatively new, so it is unlikely that they were going to not give him any support. Uh, following him, we have another uh, fan favorite deck, Graham Grace, who gives your whole board the Persona Ride power increase and has an access to a fourth attack just by himself. Uh, the deck also came out uh, with a deck set similar to Favernil and Orphist, in which he did receive a new support card, although I think out of the three... Uh, Graham Grace's new support card wasn't as impactful as the other two, where Favernil received countercharging and Orphist received a new discard target that could also put world cards into order zone. Graham Grace's kind of just gave him power, which, although cool, wasn't something we were really in need of. Graham Grace, however, is able to draw quite a few cards, as well as being able to output some high power columns. But let's move on to the Youthquake deck, Liu Han. This deck hasn't released in English yet, so it is hard to judge it, and it, it is quite off from right now, I think, releasing sometime in March. But the deck has four attacks right off the rip, and it can perform a total of five drive checks on Persona Right turns, but you don't get to keep cards from the from three of the drive checks. Um, I think when compared to Cedarlands, he is a bit better, and but when you compare him to another Youthquake deck in Silhouette, I think he is a bit weaker, uh, but, but we will see when the, the deck officially releases, uh, personally. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of him, but he is cool, and I know Cat is very interested in both Cedarlands and um, Luhan. Cat personally does like a lot of the units that have come out of the Youthquake uh, manga, with him having played both Silhouette and Mythiarch on the channel, and he is very interested in playing both Cedarlands and Luhan, which we kind of want to do a, uh, a match between, which we'll probably do, but nonetheless, let's move on to the final unit. Halmveld is a promo unit that has yet to release, but I think is quite cool. He has the ability that if you play the normal order, your front row gains plus 5k and all of your back row units gain plus uh, gain boost. Uh, then when he attacks, you can counter plus 1 to check top 5, pick a grade 3 or less card, and then depending on if you pick a normal unit or an order, you do a different effect. If, if you pick a unit card, you can call it to rear, and if you pick an order card, you get to stand a entire rear guard column. This means he has 4 attacks again right out the, out the gate. Uh, we did receive some indirect support for him in set 11 that uh, might make the deck feel a little bit more complete out the gate than some of the other promo uh, units that have come out. Uh, I believe that there is a grade 1, a grade 2, a order card uh, that all kind of help his strategy of uh, caring about normal orders, so that's going to be very cool to see. But with that, we conclude the recap. I hope you enjoyed this walk down memory lane. I, I personally enjoy getting to learn about all these decks, the certain decks I, you know, I've never even touched, so I get to just learn about them. But join me next time when we talk about the nation of Stokea. <laughs>